time we come to the is a time of development, is a time of revelation, a time that you take calls, no matter how small, another step forward in our spiritual journey. Tonight, open our eyes of understanding. Amen. Help us to appropriate that which you have provided for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because you have answered. Okay, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Amen. 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 We're looking at two passages of scripture, Matthew chapter 16, in verse 19. Jesus had been discussing with his disciples and they've been answering some questions. Then he got to a point in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, he told them, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In chapter 18, verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 18. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. As we look at those two passages, we're going to be looking at this message tonight and next week, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What are those keys will be seen? How are we to use the keys we will see? And as the Lord is giving us information and insight, I pray that we will be able to profit by it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Many people do not seek to receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven for many reasons. The first reason is ignorance. What you don't know is available, how do you appropriate it? What, do you, what you don't know exists, how do you take advantage of it? Look at Acts chapter 19. This was more than 10 years after Pentecost. But some people were still ignorant of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19. Let me read to you from. Let me read to you from verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. They were not sinners. They were disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as had whether there be any Holy Ghost. So how do you receive an Holy Ghost you don't even know exists? How do you partake in an experience you don't even know is available? These people were ignorant of the, ignorant of the Holy Ghost. And this was more than 10 years after Pentecost. And Paul was asking them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, which Holy Ghost? <laughs> we have not even heard whether there is any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, unto what day were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Ah, no wonder. You know why? Because they said, they didn't say we have not received the Holy Ghost. They said, we have not even as heart. Then he said, then now are you baptized in water? Because if we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you would have heard that there is an Holy Ghost. And they said, no, we are baptized. It's John's baptism. John's baptism is baptism unto repentance. The baptism now is Christian baptism that is completely different. John baptized in the name of the Father alone. But this is the baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And if you have not so much as heard about the Holy Ghost, it means that even your baptism is questionable. That was what Paul was saying. Now, in verse 4, then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, 
that they should believe on him, which should come after, after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they, had, when they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, that is by the authority in the mode in which Jesus left. So they, they got water baptism in the right way, the Christian baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. These were disciples. Why is it that they were, they were not, you know, baptized in the Holy Ghost? They didn't know anything about it. They were ignorant. They said, we are not even as hard if there is any Holy Ghost or not. So if somebody is ignorant that there is a keys of the kingdom, how are you going to appropriate it? How are you going to have it? That's why the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And one of the tools that the devil uses to rob Christians of their benefit is ignorance. That's why a church that the Bible is not well taught, well expounded, the people are going to suffer a lot. A lot of benefits they ought to be getting from God, they will not get. Not because God is not willing, but because they are ignorant. Ignorance is very, very bad. We have no heart. If there be any Holy Ghost, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We don't even know whether there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul said, On uh, whom are you baptized? If you have not even as heart that there's an Holy Ghost, then your water baptism is questionable. Because if, if you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you would have heard that there is an Holy Ghost. So for you not to have heard, then unto whom are you baptized? They said, John's baptism, ah, no wonder. They said that was baptism of repentance. This, our own is Christian baptism, completely different. And then they now rebaptized them properly. Then Paul now laid hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost and they received the prophesied, you know. That's important. So many are ignorant of the existence of the keys of the kingdom and hence cannot go after them. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Number two, others read about them, but they do not believe the reality of the keys of the kingdom. You remember Hebrews chapter three? Even though God promised the children of Israel, I'm taking you to a land where we make an army. But the Bible says many of them did not believe. And because of that, they perished in the wilderness because they did not believe. So when God is saying it, but we can't trust him. God is saying it, but we are not really sure. God is saying it, but we can't really bank on it. Unbelief. They didn't believe. And many of us also, we may read about them, we may hear about them, but if we do not believe on the reality of the keys of the kingdom, that these are divine realities, we may never partake of it. And number three, yet others do not desire them because they don't even know the benefits they can derive from them. You know why you hunger after something, you run after something? It's when you know the benefits that you stand to gain. Why do people run after citizenship? They know that if they get citizenship, they can travel anywhere in Europe. They know that a lot of other benefits will accrue to them. They don't have to renew their documents anymore. They are now bona fide citizens. So they run after it. They want to process it. So when you understand the benefits that you derive from something, it gives you an hunger to pursue that thing. It gives you an hunger to run after that thing. It gives you an hunger to want to acquire that thing. I pray that tonight you will understand the benefits that you receive from mm -hmm. and possessing the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And as we do, things will begin to happen in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in the local church, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in these two verses of scripture, Matthew 16, 19, and Matthew 18, 19, Jesus intimates us with the existence of the keys of the kingdom of heaven, as well as the tremendous benefits we can derive from them. The first thing we want to look at is, you know, 
How do you value something that is given unto you? It depends on the person that is giving it to you. If a madman that is by the roadside promises you and say, come and see me tomorrow, I will give you a million euros. You're not even going to think about it. <laughs> you know that he cannot feed himself unless somebody gives him money or they give him food. And then he tells you, come and see me tomorrow, I'll give you a million euros. His personality already tells you that that promise is empty. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So the person that is telling you, that matters. But you see here, it is Jesus that said, I will give, read it, chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It's the Lord himself that has no limitation. When he promises he can fulfill, he's the one that says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It's an endowment. He gives it unto you, for you to use. And we are looking at the basis and the Lord behind this endowment. It is Jesus. He says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's willing to give. The question is, are you willing to receive? He said, I will give. But he cannot force you to receive. He is willing to give. Are we ready and willing to receive? The Lord is the person behind the endowment. Is the one who gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We can only receive that which has been given to us by God. You know, it's important. If God doesn't give you, you can't have it. It's not just you desiring. God must give it. What does he give? John chapter 3, verse 27. John chapter 3, verse 27. When he says, I will give, of course he will give. He says what he means. He means what he says. He's a reliable God. I will give. John chapter 3, verse 27. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from, from heaven. heaven. If God doesn't give, you can't receive. But thank God he has said, I will give unto thee. So it is for us now to receive. So John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. And thank God there is something that Christ is giving you from heaven tonight. Amen. So you can receive something. Receive it. Because something is coming from heaven. Amen. John chapter 20, verse 22. John chapter 20, verse 22. This was after the resurrection. Look at what Jesus did for the disciples. John chapter 20, verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. He is giving. He's endowing them with power. He's giving them something. And you can't receive anything unless God gives unto you. That's important. But we thank God because he always does. Look at Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10. We have read it many, many times. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. What did Jesus say? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay. It's the one that said, Behold, I give unto you power. Oh. And you can believe it because you know the nature of the person saying it. You know the faithfulness of the person saying it. You know the you know the the the, the reliability of the person saying it. I will give unto you power. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Look at Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. 
Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He gave them power and authority. And tonight is giving you power and authority. Amen. Tonight is giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And these disciples, did they receive? Of course. As Jesus gave them power and gave them authority, look at verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. everywhere. They received the power and authority and they used it. And there were results. Tonight, you will receive the keys of the kingdom is given to you. You will use the keys and there will be results in Jesus' name. Amen. The people they gave, they received and they used it. They used the power, they used the authority, and it worked. In chapter 10, they even told Jesus, even the demons, even the devils were subject unto us through your name. They used what they received. Tonight is not just Bible study, it's not just to cram our heads with Bible knowledge, it's to receive and to use, is to appropriate and to put into use, and there will be results. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look at Psalm 104. You know, when God took the children of Israel and they were going in the wilderness for 40 years, he fed them. He never failed them for one day. And what did these people say? Psalm 104, verse 27. This wait all upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Israel always looked up to God. The food for tomorrow, oh God, were waiting upon you. And he never failed. The Bible says in verse 27, this way, all, no exception, all of them, upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Verse 28, that Thou givest them. They gather. Thou openest thy hand. They are filled with good. Tonight, as God opens his hand, you will be filled with good. Amen. Amen. As, as God opens his treasures, the keys will be conveyed unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that he is the one, the basis of the gifts of the kingdom, the Lord behind the gift, behind the endowment, is Jesus himself. The Lord is the person behind the endowment. He is the one that who gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We can only receive that which has been given to us by God. And he's ready to give. He said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven, they are perfect gifts. Coming from heaven. James chapter 1 in verse 17. James chapter 1. What a perfect gift God is giving you tonight. The gift that works wonders. The gift that is very effective. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of lights. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And tonight... The keys of the, of, the, of the kingdom of heaven, they are gifts coming from above. They are gifts emanating from God. They are perfect gifts coming. The keys of the kingdom of God that Jesus gives us, they are keys that work. They are keys that are effective. Yes. You will use them to bind, things will be bound. You will lose them to lose, things will be loosed. And it will, be, it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, the Lord told us of the existence of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He said, I will be. He, if they didn't exist, he would not tell me he's going to give you. They exist. And then he said that there are some keys of the kingdom and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We didn't know whether there is anything of that nature so we never desire after them, just like the Acts of the Apostles, those 12 disciples. But thank God, tonight you are getting knowledge. Tonight Amen. you are getting insight. Tonight Amen. you are getting a certainty 
that there are things called the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Number two, the Lord promised to give unto us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. His promises, they are here and amen. He doesn't miss words. He is faithful that promise and he will give. His promises, when he says he will give, he gives. He doesn't, he doesn't backtrack on his word. And then he says, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I pray that each one of us tonight we will reach out and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number three, it is our responsibility to reach out and to receive that which yes. God has promised us. He can't do the receiving for us. So you should reach out and receive that which heaven has promised and that which heaven is bestowing upon you. Tonight is a night to receive an endowment. Amen. The peace of the kingdom. Amen. The basis of our reception is because God is giving us a good gift from above. Something is coming from heaven. He's willing, he's ready to give. We must be willing, ready to receive. And it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. What are those keys? In Matthew chapter 16, once again, in verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdoms of heaven, and whatsoever, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, heaven. and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall, shall be loosed in heaven. So I come to the second point, finding and losing on earth. You know, there are some people that are, that are saying, Pastor, when I get to heaven, I'm going to bind and lose. Heaven is a perfect place. You don't need that gift. You don't need those keys. There is no need for binding and losing in heaven. It is here on earth. We need to lose and bind. Because there's a devil that is troubling people. Because there are problems that need to be solved. When we get to heaven, it's a perfect place. You don't need the keys of the kingdom of heaven to do anything in heaven. There is no need for binding and losing in heaven. It is here. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth, whatsoever you lose on earth. Very important. Binding and losing on earth. Christ said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with those keys, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, and whatsoever things thou shalt, whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, it says, Verily, that is assuredly, that is in truth without missing any words, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth. And then he says, whatsoever you shall lose on earth. So there is a binding and losing on earth. Now I want you to pay attention because some people don't, they mix up binding and losing. They don't understand. And I want you to understand the binding and losing tonight. Because our preoccupation on earth should be binding and losing and not grumbling and complaining about our hardships. You know, many brethren say, Pastor, I don't know, I'm tired. I'm tired of this Christian life. What am I going to do? My brother, there will not be any solution. God does not ratify complaint. He says, whatever you bind on earth, you will bind it in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, you will lose it in heaven. So instead of complaining and grumbling about the hardship of your situation, bind and lose to get results. And that should be our preoccupation. It should be binding and losing, not grumbling and complaining, not making no excuses and then just saying, well, I don't know what God is doing. God is waiting for you. The initiative must come from you. God said, whatever you buy, you will buy. Whatever you lose, you will lose. If you don't buy, he doesn't buy. If you don't lose, he doesn't lose. The initiative comes from you. And that should be our preoccupation. Binding and losing. Then you're asking me, Pastor, what do we bind? <laughs> what do we bind? Number one, we bind Satan, the strong man, through the greater and stronger one that is in us. Because when you read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Because 
Satan is a strong man. If you are going to bind him, you need to be stronger. But ordinarily by yourself, you are not stronger. But through Jesus that lives in you, you are stronger. First John chapter 4, verse 4. She has got little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you can be stronger than the strong man through Jesus that lives in you. Because you need that strong man, the stronger person, to bind the enemy. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. The Bible says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his, his house? We, we need to bind him. But the Bible says he's a strong man. And if you are going to enter his house, then you must be stronger than him. And then you bind him. You must first bind the strong man before you can do anything. Luke chapter 11. So you are getting the gist. What do we bind? Number one, we bind Satan, the strong man. He's the one that is creating confusion in all the place. We bind him. Luke 11, verse 21. When a strong man, that's the devil, armed, he met his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him, and we are going to come upon him, because greater mm -hmm. is he that lives with all, within us than he that is in the world. And through that empowering Christ, through that empowering Jesus, will come against the enemy and will bind him. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taken from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divided his, his voice. So you come upon him as a stronger than the strong man, and then you bind him. So number one, we bind the strong, the strong man through the greater and the stronger one, that lives within us. That's the first thing that we do. It's the main thing. Satan must fall down like lightning from heaven. Number two, we bind demons, principality, the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in, in high places and cast them out. What does it mean to bind? Let me show you an example. You know, the Matthew chapter 22, the marriage of the king's son. He told some people, he invited them, some people make excuses, and then he gave garments unto them and said, okay, come into the feast. And then they found some people that did not have that garment. In Matthew 22, in verse 13, they said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this was someone that should not be in that field. He said, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. He called the servant, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And that's what it means to bind. We don't only bind, that's why we bind the evil spirit and we cast them out. That's how to bind. Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. It tells you exactly what it means to bind. So when we are casting out devils, it's part of the binding. It's part of the binding. So we bind demons, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places, and we cast them out. That's what we do in Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. See what Jesus was doing here. Mark chapter 9 in verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. That's binding. Mm -hmm. That's binding. Bound that spirit. Don't operate in this territory anymore. I nullify your power. 
Now get out of the place, cast him out. Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. That is binding, that is binding. And by the grace of God, we will do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You remember Acts chapter 16, when Paul cast out that evil spirit with that uh, young girl that was uh, using the spirit of Python, spirit of divination to fortune tell. And the moment that evil spirit left that place, the girl could not do anything anymore. She became powerless. That's binding. Number three, you know, some people don't understand. We need to bind some people. I'm not saying wicked people. You know, when you find a woman who has been cursed, she's never satisfied in the house of one man. From man to man to man to man to man, her feet does not abide in the house. She's going from places. You know what the devil has done? The devil has loosed her feet. And the devil says, don't have rest. Don't stay in one place. Don't stay in one marriage. Don't stay with one man. Just be running aimlessly, purposefully, I mean, purposelessly and unfaithfully, just from man to man, from bed to bed, just be jumping. And the person is loosed. We bind what Satan has loosed. And when we do deliverance for that individual, we say, we bind your feet. You will settle in one marriage. You will settle in one house. You're not going to go from man to man. You'll be satisfied and fulfilled in one marriage. That's still binding. We bind that which Satan has loosed. We lose what Satan has bound. You know, every single time, whatever Satan has done, you do the opposite. So when Satan has loosened the feet of people, and then they are just walking about endlessly, roaming around, you know, we, we, we bind them and say, remain in this place and be settled. That's still part of binding. So we bind the feet in steadfastness. We bind that feet in stability. Those that Satan has loosed their feet to walk around aimlessly, purposelessly, and unfaithfully. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. And you know, it's, so there are some people that their problem is just because is satanic. It's not just because they are just loose. It's satanic. Some of them have been cursed. You will never find rest in the house of one husband. And the person who marry one, marry two, marry three, marry four, marry five, marry six, marry seven, until you lose count. First Timothy chapter five, I read the verse 13. It says, and whither they man to be idle, wandering about from house. house to house and not only I do but that was also and busy bodies speaking things which mm -hmm. they don't know. They can't stay in their house. Gossip. They are going to find them everywhere. And people are saying, but what is wrong with this woman? Can she even sit at home? Sometimes some of them is not normal. Some of them is just Satan has loosed them and say you you should not have any rest. Just be going around, talk, 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 talk. That kind of a person, we need to bind him and say, remain in one place. Remain in your husband's house. Remain and keep your children. Remain and enjoy your family. Be fulfilled and satisfied in this marriage and not be running around elder skelter. That's still binding. You are not binding the devil now. You are binding somebody who the devil has loosed. And the devil says, I know no fulfillment should be in stability. For you, unstable as water thou shalt be, you will not excel. Just be roaming around. And you need to bind that individual and say, No. Satan loosed you to roam, roam around aimlessly. I bind you to remain here, be steadfast, be stable, and enjoy your life and be fulfilled. That's still binding. I pray the Lord will help us. Mm. Remember that woman, the woman that Amos said, you man, you are telling me I should not prophesy here. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Your, your wife will be an adult in the city. That's not normal. 
That woman had been faithful before, but after that prophetic curse and pronouncement, that woman will go to the house of people. You can counsel her till tomorrow. She will feel remorse. Tomorrow she's going after another man. And then you, but aren't you ashamed? Look at what is happening. Everybody in the community is looking at you. She will look uh, sober, but tomorrow she's going after. It's not ah. And I'm not in the city. There's a cause upon that person's life. Loose to be perverted, to, to be a pervert. Loose just to be going after immorality. Loose never to be satisfied with one man. Loose never to settle in any marriage. The same Satan has loose the feet to just walk about aimlessly. We bind that feet and establish it in one place. That's still binding. That's still binding. I pray the Lord Himself, He will help us, you know, with this understanding of tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. Mark chapter 2, verse 5. It says, Ye also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, and, keep and neither keepeth at all, who enlarged his desire as hell, and is as dead, and cannot be satisfied, or gathereth unto him all nations, all nations. keepeth unto him all people. All this person, he said, doesn't keep at all, can never be satisfied. Go here and go there and go there, and no matter what, just keeps on going. That's a person that Satan has loosed. They just wander around the world. You will never have, you will never settle in one in one marriage. Just be going. When that kind of a person comes, we need to bind that feet. Say so this feet that Satan has said, this feet should just be a walk out feet. I bind this feet to remain in this place. Remain steadfast, remain stable, stay in this marriage, stay in this relationship. Find fulfillment in your marriage. Find fulfillment with your husband. Keep home. Don't go from house to house. That's still binding. Number four, then we lose into freedom and liberty. Those that Satan and his agents have held in captivity, the people that have been bound, we lose them. Those that Satan has loosed, we bind them. You know, Satan has loosed the agents of Satan into the world, released them into the world to be, to, be, to, be, to be doing havoc. We bind those ones and say, no, you have no freedom to be oppressing people. You are bound. Because he loosed them into the world. We bind them. And then the, the one that Satan has bound and said, you cannot enjoy your freedom. You will never enjoy your God-given blessing. We lose them to enjoy their God-given blessing. Luke chapter 13. I hope tonight you are understanding, binding, and losing. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 13. This woman that Satan bound 18 years. Luke chapter 13. From verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorify God. Mm. And then some people came to challenge Jesus. And Jesus now told them in verse 16, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from his, this bond on the Sabbath day, anywhere you get to, when Satan has bound somebody, you need to lose him. 
when Satan has lost somebody, you need to bind that person. If he has lost his agent to be wrecking a work in the community, we bind those agents. If he has losing somebody to just be walking aimlessly about, we bind that person in stability. If Satan loses, you bind. If Satan binds, you lose. Satan bound this woman. Jesus first said, you are loosed from your infirmity. You do the opposite of what Satan does, binding and losing. That's why I said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to bring deliverance to the captives, to loosen them from their captivity. And tonight, the Lord, if you are here and you are bound, the Lord will release you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to, to go back as we look at the last point, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I want to show you something very important. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. The initiative starts on earth. Whatsoever you bind on earth, God will bind it in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall, shall be loosed in heaven. What do we call that? That's the backing of the Lord eternal. Backing of God. God says, I'll back you up. If you bind, I will bind. If you lose, I will lose. If you bind, I will, I will ratify it. If you lose, I will authorize it. We need to do initiative. Many times we are waiting for God. God says, no, heaven is waiting for you. Whatever you bind on earth, heaven says, yes, we follow it with action, we bind. Whatever you lose on earth, heaven says we are waiting, we lose as well. What happens if I don't bind, then nothing gets bound. What happens if I don't lose, then nothing gets loosed. The situation remains the same. The devil will be doing this havoc and then will be blaming God. God says, no, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to take action. I'm ready to back you. I'm ready to do, but the initiative must come from you. If you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. If you lose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. Look at chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The activity must start, the initiative must start from us. The Lord eternal has promised to back us up in our binding and losing. In our binding and losing endeavor. If there is binding and losing on earth, there will be binding and losing in heaven. Earth's initiative will be backed up by heaven's confirmation. Stretch out your rod and divide the Red Sea. If you will stretch forth your rod and divide the Red Sea, Heaven will respond, the Red Sea will open. Go around the walls of Jericho 13 times. After that, let the priest blow with the trumpet and let the people give a great shout. If on earth, you will do that. You will go around the walls of Jericho 13 times. The priest blow the last trumpet. The people give a great shout. Heaven will respond. Those walls will fall down flat. Very important. What does the Bible say? The Bible, when he told them, go into all the world, the Bible says they went. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Everyone will respond. And tonight, as we receive the keys of the kingdom, I can see heaven responding. Amen. Find, I can see things being bound. Amen. Amen. To lose, I can see things being loose. Amen. Amen. Heaven will back you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But initiative must come from you. Acts initiative will be backed up by Apple's confirmation. Number two, Acts pronouncement will be sealed and ratified in heaven. The Bible says, look at Joshua chapter 10. I want you to see that. Joshua chapter 10. Because this is a principle that goes on in the Bible. Many times we have waited for God and God says, oh, my children, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. The power is in your hand. 
The initiative is with you. The pronouncement you must make. When you say to the mountain, I will order the mountain to shift. Joshua chapter 10, I read in verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and said, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. I want you to read verse 14. I want you to see verse 14. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord acted unto the voice of a man for the Lord for, Lord for Israel. If you will move, the Lord will fight for you. You will hold your peace. Amen. If you will declare, son, stand still. God will say, you heard him. Stand still. Mm. Moon, stay there. God will tell the moon, I created you, but you heard what he said. Stay there. Heaven will ratify it. Mm. Your pronouncement will be sealed and ratified by heaven. Amen. You know what God told the children of Israel? As you are spoken in my ears. Please um, so I want to do 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 do. you. God said, you, you take the lead. You proclaim blessing, God says, so be it. You proclaim cause, God says, so be it. As you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Oh, I'm going into captivity. God says, you have it. Oh, I have a breakthrough tonight. God says, you have it. As you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. When God makes a move, heaven backs it up. Art degree will be authorized and legalized in heaven. What does Job chapter 22 verse 20 says? Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Who will establish it? God. If you will bind tonight, things will be bound in heaven. If you will lose tonight, things will be loosed in heaven. Amen. God has promised to work with us confirming the word with signs of you know what he said? You will lay your hands on the sick you shall recover. Them to recover. If the priest will move and step into the vagina, the vagina will part into two. Arts initiative, everyone's confirmation. Arts pronouncement, everyone's ratification. Arts decree, everyone establishment. And tonight, it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of binding and losing. Tonight is yours to receive. Amen. Let's, let's rise up and pray. Let's rise up and pray. Let's rise up and pray. It's yours to receive, my brother. It's yours to receive, my sister. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of binding and losing. You already know. You can't claim ignorance anymore. God has told you. Jesus has told you. There are some keys of the kingdom of, of heaven. And then he said, I will give unto you. Why do you say, oh Lord, I receive tonight the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you promised to give unto me. I receive tonight. I receive tonight. I receive tonight. I receive these keys of the kingdom. I receive these keys of the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven. I receive these keys of the kingdom of heaven. I receive these keys of the kingdom of heaven. Receive, 
is the open the doors of wonders into my life. I receive it tonight by faith in the name of Jesus. I receive it tonight by faith in Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it tonight by faith. And I Lord, I take you Satan, where are you coming from? Mm. He said, from walking to and fro. He's loose mm. on earth. Just going to and fro the earth. Mm. Tonight we bind him. Amen. Amen. In every territory where we are, we render you powerless in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We bind you hand and foot. We carry you away 
and cast you into outer darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our environment is free from your satanic operations in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the agents that you have loose, let loose in the world. Hallelujah. Give it down on the knock. Give it down on the kick. Mm. Poisoning that one, oppressing that one, afflicting that one, roaming all around the territory. Tonight, those agents that you have let loose, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we render them powerless in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We render them powerless. Amen. Amen. In the family, we render them powerless. Amen. In the local churches, we render them powerless. Amen. In our communities, we render them powerless. Amen. Amen. We take their armor wherein they trusted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bind the principalities and power. Amen. The prince of Torino, the prince yes. of Russia, the prince of Rome, the yes. prince of Mantova, in the name of Jesus. Of in the, the name of Jesus. Jesus. So now we bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In all the territory where we are, the, P, the Prince of Pescara and Pesaro, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. People to come to the Lord, to come to the knowledge of the Lord, wreaking havoc in the society. We bind you and render your activities powerless tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With the keys of the kingdom, we have power over you. We bind you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray. People that Satan has not let them loose, they cannot enjoy their marriage. Women that are never satisfied in one family, going from bed to bed, from man to man, they are never satisfied because Satan has let them loose. Men that are never satisfied. They are complete, but they are still chasing every skirt in town. Tonight, I bind your feet to remain stable. Amen. I bind your feet to remain steadfast. Amen. And you will find fulfillment in one marriage. Amen. We keep her at home in Jesus' name. Amen. All the I mean, useless wandering from house to house, from man to man, from woman to woman, from, from bed to bed. I terminate it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring your feet to remain stable in one place in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray, anybody here tonight whom Satan has bound 18 years, 12 years, five years, one year, one month, last week, even today, be loosed in Jesus' name. Amen. Be loosed from your infirmity. Amen. From your sickness. Amen. From any satanic oppression in Jesus' name. Amen. We lose from every harassment of Satan, you know, coming in satanic dreams and nightmares. I terminate the enemy's assignment in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To enjoy your sleep. Lose to enjoy your life. Lose to enjoy your body. Every, every form of pain, every form of discomfort, I bind them and I cast them out of that body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, receive your deliverance. I receive your faith. God, I pray. It's not only me, you are given to your people. You've given them the keys of the kingdom tonight. I pray that as heaven is depositing the keys of the kingdom of heaven into your life tonight, receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you open your mouth to bind and loose, heaven will sanction the binding. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Amen. And whether you lose on earth, will be loosed in heaven. Amen. Heaven's initiative will be will be confirmed in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Heaven's pronouncement, the Lord will sanction it and ratify it in Jesus' name. Amen. He will decree a thing, it will be established unto you. Amen. When you bind, heaven will bind and it will be bound. Amen. When you lose, heaven will lose and it will be loosed. Amen. So be it. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen.